In this video, I'm going to show you how to get your uh, travel demand model for the project in this course, project and assignments, and how to run it for the first time. The first thing we are going to do is we need to download the model from Canvas. So we come here to Files, and there's this file called rvtpobear.zip. We'll click it, and we will download it. The file is now downloaded, and we want to extract it to where we will be working with it. So if we select it and then come to these compressed config folder tools, we'll say extract all, and we can choose the place where we want to put it. One thing to note is that the path that you put it at can have no spaces in it. So this location is not going to work. I'm going to instead choose a different version. And I, I often just put things in the C directory in a folder called projects and I will extract it to that point. It may take a while because uh, there's actually a full copy of R inside the model um, and it takes a little bit of time to extract. There's also a good reason to not put the model on the J drive uh, because writing to and reading from a network drive is going to be considerably slower. So I would put it on a drive that is attached to your computer either the C drive or a thumb drive of some kind, but not somewhere where you have to read and write it from a network. So that folder is now extracted. I put it in C courses. And if we open it up, you can see there's a base folder, a cube folder, and we'll get into what each of these different folders contain later in the course. Uh, but for now, what we want to do is we want to open up the cube catalog, which is this roanoke.cat file. If you've opened it before, then it will be associated with Cube. Otherwise, you'll have to tell Windows to associate it with Cube. But we open it up, and Cube will take a moment to open. When Cube opens, you get this warning saying that the path of the application has moved from C projects where it was developed to whatever the path you put it on. Uh, and do you want to update the path? And you push yes to this, and then you get a warning saying that some of these uh, tokens can't be changed, and that's fine. Push OK, and then the travel model opens up. And you get these, uh, you know, you can see each step of the travel model here, a network, trip generation, um, trip distribution, you know, and some of the other steps that happen to make the travel model run. Uh, the inputs to each step are on the left, the outputs from each step are on the right, and if we click you know, the input, we can see the input highway network. But we can't click on the outputs yet because we've not run the travel model. To run the travel demand model and all the steps of it, you come up here to this uh, big friendly run button. Click that. It says, well, which scenarios do you want to run? We'll select base. And let's say run application now from task monitor. Um, and push to go. And then it'll say, oh, there were some errors because some of the input or output files weren't available. This is fine. And then it will say, we've created the run file. Are you ready to go? And we'll say, yes, we are. OK. Cube will do a little bit of crunching to get its systems up and running. And then it will start calculating the model. When the travel demand model finishes running, you'll get this uh, message saying that the run is complete. This model runs in a very short amount of time. This run took me, uh, I think, 10 minutes. And it should take a pretty similar amount of time, regardless of the computer you're running it on, as long as you run it on a local disk instead of a network drive. Um, there are only 250 zones, and it's not a super complex model. Uh, but that makes it really great to use in this class. So we push OK. And now if we were to look at an output file, like, for instance, the um, loaded network, highway network, we can open it up. And we can post a value to, to the links. 
let's say, um, pick a volume, pick a volume such as, um, well, let's do the total uh, the PM period volume to capacity ratio. I'll click this, and if we zoom in on it, oh, it's all zeros, and this is because um, it's a rounded number. So let's round to nearest point oh one. And now you can see what the volume to capacity ratio is on every link. There will be another video discussing how to look at colors or how to do graphics in Cube. But for now, you have a complete run of the travel demand model.